about represent Massachusetts Day and um, having a good time. There's already been tons of people through, so it's, it's going to be a great day. Mass Day to, to, for us is very important because it highlights what's made in this state, hopefully, or agriculturally what's produced in this state. Yes, Massachusetts Day. So, woohoo! Go Frigos! <laughs> That's right, Massachusetts Day at the Big E, and what a fabulous day it was to celebrate all that our state has to offer. And most people already know us, but some people don't know we're from Massachusetts, and we're proud to be from Massachusetts, guys. And uh, because the peanuts all come from the U.S., and uh, we, we grind them up in Boston and Everett, and that, uh, that's why we're number one. Teddy Peanut Butter, the number one all-natural peanut butter made in the Northeast. Sales manager Mark was handing out spoonfuls of samples. We have salted, unsalted. We have one with flaxseed added, which is rich in omega-3s. Good for your heart health, everybody out there. Another group coming from the east bearing samples of fresh milk, but their message is statewide. Fuel Up to Play 60 is an in-school program. It's sponsored by the National Football League and the Dairy Council. And what our, our objective is, is to get kids fueled up with healthy foods so they can be active and play outside for 60 minutes every day. So it, it's all over New England. Uh, locally, we're um, sponsored by the New England Patriots as well as the New England Dairy and Promotion Board. Exactly. It's a beautiful day today. People are out and about, but we're trying to get that message out, out to kids as well. When they get home from school, instead of going and listening to videos or playing, you know, text messaging and, you know, talking with their friends online, we want them to get out there and really get out there and be active, as well as incorporate healthy foods in their diet every day. Fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and no fat and low fat dairy products. A nationwide message, making sure your child has the proper ID kit in the case of an Amber Alert. Mass State Trooper Nicole Morell explains. I'm the Amber Alert Coordinator for the state, and we are here doing digital identification kits. Uh, essentially, that's a thumb drive, and we upload their fingerprints. We scan them onto the thumb drive and their photograph. We digitally scan that onto the uh, thumb drive as well. Time is of the essence when it comes to finding a child that's kidnapped, and we found that uh, by having all of the information in one, one place, cuts down on that time of recovery. So we give out these ID kits for free to parents that come to the Big E or any event in Massachusetts we attend. And we're hoping if that child does get misplaced, lost, kidnapped, then that parent will have that with them and they can give it to any law enforcement that they see and they can upload it right away into their mobile data terminals and their cruisers um, and we can recover their ch that child real quickly. And if you didn't already know, we'll let you in on a little secret. Massachusetts has seen its fair share of visits from Hollywood. Our towns serve as the backdrops to some major motion pictures. We, as we say, we're at our end of the state, we say we're Hollywood West. Um, because we have had quite a few movies made out in our area. Um, years ago, in Lenox, uh, Cedar, Cedar House was made, and that was set in Lenox with the Ventford Hall of the Gilded Ages. Lisa Strout, who is very instrumental again in a lot of movies made in Massachusetts. Right now we have six different films being done in Massachusetts at this current time. Uh, one of the ones that was done in my region is the Labor, is Labor Day, which had Kate Winslet and uh, Josh Brolin in it, which has really made a big boom for the little town of Sherman Falls, because the movie came out already. And so everybody wants to see where the Iron Bridge is in the movie and they want to see if they can get the recipe for the peach pie that was in the movie. Now time for a little wine from our neighbor, the Hardwick Winery. Uh, the old style 1700 uh, mansion on the property, we grow our own grapes, um, we have the winery and um, the vineyard right there and we have all kinds of events on the winery. It's such a beautiful historical place and it's just we have it's nice to come out and spend a day, take a picnic. It's, um, it's a really nice place in the middle of Central Mass that Nobody really knows we're there, so it's it's nice to be there, yeah. Well, we have we have a little bit of everything. We have dry whites, we have dry red, and we have a lot of different sweet wines, um, from sweet whites to a dessert red, which is unique, um, and then our cranberry, of course, which is our best seller, and our blush, which has a lot of peach flavors. Um, but what's interesting is that they're all grape wines. They're not fruit wines, but have a lot of different fruit flavors to them. To go with that wine, how about the fair's largest meatball? Frigos has been a three-generation hotspot in Springfield for more than 65 years. It's very popular. We have people coming from Connecticut, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, New York, 
Um, our store is pretty popular anyway, so we sell our one pound meatball there. But this was made especially for the Big E. It's the fair's largest meatball. It's homemade. It has veal, pork, and beef in it. And every single meatball is hand formed. We're going through thousands because it's so popular and it's really good. Make around these are our Frigo homemade chips. They're very popular. They sell out on Friday and Saturday like crazy. We have people calling in the morning saying, save me chips, save me chips. So, yeah. Famous Western Mass salesman Manny, usually known for his appliances, showcased his home goods from his home, the island of Crete. We were selling the uh, olives for years and years, and then, you know, about five years ago, I decided with my sisters and the brother that, you know, okay, let me bring the olive oil up here and see what I can do with it, okay? So I went to big Y stores, and they took it on, and so now I bring more. I bring it up by container. I bring it, you know, by boat. Uh, and then the other thing is this year, this is all pottery from Greece, from the island of Crete, okay? So trying to see it, I want to see uh, what some of the gardeners can do or the uh, landscapers, the designers, because we have some big vases that, you know, they can go well inside a new house or something like that, so. Manny's Olive Oil also won a silver award from New York Times Food Critics as being one of the purest, best olive oils in the world right now. Yeah. And your olive oil is very delicious. Yes, it is. What makes it kind of different than any other olive oil? Well, because we don't, we don't play with it. We don't, when we, we pick the olives, we bring it up there within 24 hours, they press it for us, and then the guy keeps it and, until we need it, uh, you know, to bring it up, to put it. He bottles it for us, and also I have a lot of people from the village, okay, they bring their olives up there. And the other thing, we also have uh, olives, okay, that uh, you can pick up at Fresh Acres and uh, Table and Vine. All of Western Mass was very well represented by some familiar spots. I've been here myself for almost 12 years and I think uh, they've been here for at least five if not longer um, prior to so I'm going to say about 15 or 20 years they've been coming down to the Big E with their ice cream. We have a new flavor that we came up with especially for the Big E. It's called banana cream pie ice cream and it's a fluffy version of banana ice cream with vanilla vanilla wafers in it. All of our favorite Palmer businesses were here today on Massachusetts Day to show off their specialties, including Burgundy Brook Farms and Thorndike Mills braided rugs. Yeah, it's our first year. We're really excited and we're really thankful for the Big E to have us here. Um, it's been a great experience so far. People are really receptive to us. Everybody's willing to try the product and everybody loves it once they try it. We're a farm to table restaurant, so we grew the vegetables for the pie. Um, we had a great garden this year, so we brought some of our, uh, we bake our breads every morning at the restaurant. So we brought some cinnamon swirl, we brought some oatmeal molasses, honey wheat, white rye. Um, then we have some turnovers that we make every morning here. We make um, melt away cinnamon buns, put some walnuts on it. We make some raspberry rosebuds, cheese danish, you name it. Their French meat pie received a lot of attention from fairgoers. So it's ground pork, ground beef, potatoes, celery and onions, and then we put spices and lots of love. And our crust is completely made from scratch. So each pie was made individually and people love it so far. Thorndike Mills dates back to 1925 and has been at the Big E since 1996. What makes us special is because we strive on quality, not on price. And we use new materials so we can match our products day in and day out. And the, the fibers, we go from synthetics to wools. So we held, have the full gamut, but our, what we're known for is our fabric braids made out of cloth, as it was originally. And we're the only ones in the country to do that. We pick up a lot of business from this. Uh, we send a lot of business to our dealers, which we have nationwide. So it serves a dual purpose. We couldn't stop trying all the dips from Simply Diplicious, recipes that hail from Three Rivers. Uh, me and my boyfriend started about three years ago. We came up with all the recipes ourselves and we buy them, make, buy the spices, mix them all together and make our product. And we go to craft fairs almost every other weekend. It's a long process. It takes years to come up with a new flavor. It's just 
hit or miss. You know, you pick a flavor that you want to try, and then you got to pick this different herbs and spices, and a little bit here, a little bit there, and it's a lot of trying and a lot of not so good trying. <laughs> but it's good. I mean, what makes our dips different is they're very flavorful. You know, a lot of people don't put salt in their dips. We do because salt makes flavor taste good. You know, there's not a lot of salt in it, but there is salt, but they make the flavors pop. So and we, try, we have, I think, have different flavors than most other dip companies, too. We try to. Right down the street in the Wilbraham shops, Pops Biscotti sweetened up the celebration. Some of our most popular biscotti and chocolates, um, we brought about eight flavors of biscotti and a whole bunch of chocolate. We have a lot more at the shop, but uh, we brought our most popular items today. I make all the biscotti. My wife Maria makes all the um, chocolates, and my son runs the shop. And we have the edible cookie dough dipped in chocolate, which is a big hit, and uh, the uh, ancho chili chocolate with roasted sunflowers. Um, uh, most of the pumpkin seeds, I'm sorry, uh, real good too. More Palmer faces were among the crowd, including Bruce Marshall from Real Oldies and our town's fire chief, Alan Roy, along with firefighter and educator, Lori Rocco. We are a local community-oriented station. We play music of the late 50s to the mid-70s. Uh, we're based, our studios are in Palmer. We cover the whole entire Pioneer Valley uh, into the Worcester County area too as well. And we do local high school sports as well as uh, great music and live interviews and lots of giveaways in the morning show with Andy B. We got some great prizes. We've got uh, some Steve Lewis giveaways we're doing as well. Chance to win some koozies, some keychains, some t-shirts. Spin the wheel and you never know what's going to come out to take a chance. We also have a chance to win a Home Depot card and also a chance to win a uh, three-day, two-night stay up in Killington. Well, we're here at the uh, fire prevention booth uh, for the Western Mass uh, Fire and Safety Educators. And they've done a nice job here with their booth, putting it together. Um, if you're in the area, you've got to stop by and, and see everybody and see what they have to offer as far as educational material, uh, educational tips uh, to keep uh, you and your family safe. Well, this is our third year we're being able to be in the Massachusetts building for the fire safety education. And we've brought all kinds of tips on how to uh, prevent um, fires in your home, kitchen fires, changing your smoke detectors. We actually have an interactive wheel for people to come up and they can spin the wheel, win a prize, and we ask them a fire safety education question. So it's been really good. We've had a lot of great feedback and a lot of people learning things that you thought they really already should have known. I'm going to spin this wheel and then they're going to ask me a question and we'll see if I win a prize. Money, money, money. I got kids stickers, adults jar opener 12. What is the lifespan of a carbon monoxide detector? The lifespan of a carbon monoxide detector would have to be two years. Uh, no, it's five to seven years with seven being the maximum depending on the manufacturer's recommendations. But after seven years, every carbon monoxide detector would need to be replaced. Well, at least I'm on the lower end of that. <laughs> I'm replacing it too much. Yes. So what do I win here, a pot holder? Uh, you can win a pot holder or you can have a jar opener. Great, thank you. Lots to learn and do for another great year at the Big E. I'm Darcy Fortune, Impact TV.